different aircraft we need to build up. Um, we've got um, basically the reconnaissance aircraft and the observation aircraft, um, two slightly different um, types of um, float plane that um, we used on the ship. So in total um, we have three of those and eight of those. So 11 aircraft to build. So let's get cracking with that. So I'm going to build up the three um, peat aircraft um, first. Uh, each one of these aircraft is made up of 12 individual parts. So there's quite a lot of um, just um, cleaning the parts up to do first. So I'm going to do that and then we should be able to build all these up in, in one go. Let's make a peat. three built um, actually you end up with one of these as um, a spare there is a, a fourth one that could be built up um, if you wished um, contained within the sprues so the jakes are less complicated there's only seven parts for each one of these um, and we have to make eight of them
we're going to paint all of these aircraft um, by hand. Um, it's slower than painting by airbrush, but it's more exact, so less touch up, less masking, so actually it ends up quicker than using the airbrush in the end. I suppose that depends on your skill with an airbrush to a certain extent. But for me, I'd be masking and therefore this is quicker. So as you can see, I've put a black down as the um, primer and that is just to help me see what I'm doing. Um, And then we're putting the underside colour down, which will need more than one coat because we've got a dark primer. Um, so, and then we'll put the green on top because it'll be easier to go over this. So my uh, first coat going down is um, relatively thick. And then we'll do some thinner coats on top. Okay, I will crack on with this and show you what that looks like when we're ready to uh, get the green paint on. Right, we have painted the upper surfaces of these aircraft now in um, dark green 2, which is the recommended colour in the instructions. Um, there's about, so far, and I've still got to paint the silver on the front of the spinners and the, the front surfaces of the propellers and the back black on the back of the propellers and we've still got to paint in the windows um, so far there's about four hours work here which I estimate is probably double the amount of time it would have taken me if I wasn't using Tamiya paint um, we are going to be doing decaling very soon and there's lots and lots of decals to go on here so hopefully by the time when they're all decaled up I'll be happy with them, but um, uh, in this instance, the Tamiya paint has caused me um, to to feel like I've not quite achieved what I wanted with the aircraft. Time to add the decals to the aircraft, and the first aircraft we're tackling is the Jake. We have eight of these, and there is 15 decals to add on to this. So the best way is to start with the um, canopy decal um, which needs a fair amount of work to get it to settle um, so we get that one on first and I find because these decals are a bit thicker um, that the optimum number of decals to have in soak is four so every time we take one out we'll put one in so the Decal is orientated, um, this being the front, and you can tell it's the front because of this little, tiny little black window, um, which faces the front. Um, so just ensuring that we don't get this on the wrong way around. I'm going to take it off its backing paper. Carefully put it on the top. to drag that forward a little bit and then using my finger and thumb we're just going to push down the sides and then I'm using Microsol to just soften the decal in place Um, and I found that these decals, even though they're quite thick, responded quite well to the microsoft. There we go. And we'll just let that sit and soften for a sec while we get on with the other decals. So, doing the wing edges first just helps when it comes to positioning the uh, rising sun markings on the wing. If you're not careful you could put the rising sun too far in and then these markings would clash and while those are drying on the wing we can deal with the side of the fuselage 
and the underwing. And you'll notice all I'm doing is putting them on and positioning them at the moment. And then we're going to move on to the floats and there's two decals on each float. Right, so we have a red stripe with a white border. Um, and I'm actually putting these on the float a little bit further back than the instructions recommend because they're a bit long if you put them where it says. So it wants them in line with the prop, um, but they're just too long and they overhang. Um, so I'm just pushing them back a little bit further up the float where it's a bit wider, a bit thicker, and um, the, the decal fits fine there. Then the last two decals are the white stripes on the tail. Now these decals are oversized. The white stripes aren't, but the film is. So once dry, you're going to have to trim the film up. So you can see how the film there is overhanging at the front and the back. There we go. Right, now that we've got the decals on, Dipping my brush in the microsol, and I'm just going over all of the decals and giving them a little squeegee. Any water that was on them should have evaporated largely by now. And now all those decals have had some microsol. I'm going to go back to the canopy and we're going to push down the rear glass and push down the front glass and then when that dries we can go around and fold the decal back and that should look alright. That is 15 decals done pretty much in 15 minutes. So now moving on to the peat, there's three of these to do. Um, and again, I've got 15 decals to um, tackle. So let's crack on with that. So that is the 11 aircraft uh, finished in terms of painting and decals. The only thing I've got left to do is to trim the tail where I've got um, carrier film that's, that's hanging over the the actual part because they were oversized, all the tails, the decals were oversized. But despite my concerns that the decals might be a little bit thick, I have managed to get them all down, including the canopy decals. So all of these windows that you can see here have all been done by the decals. Now, they're not brilliant, um, but um, they have worked. So we're going to leave them um, as they are. But um, they look... Um, suitably menacing as a fleet of aircraft so what we've got to do now is build up the carriages which is a combination of um, two etch parts so we have the framework that the aircraft sits on and then we have the carriage that goes on the the track to get them where moves them around the ship to get them where they need to be uh, and the track is uh, formed onto this little plastic part here so um, there's three parts to the um, framework that the aircraft sit on. Uh, so once these are built up and painted, we're able to place those on the aircraft. And at that point, uh, when we're ready to put them on, we're at the uh, final um, finishing touches of, of the ship. So I'm doing a very small amount of... Uh, spraying I take the paint cup off and just put it directly into the brush so we've just got to paint up these little um, etch stands for the aircraft to go on okay. I've not turned over So we'll let that dry and I'll go and clean my airbrush up. 
So now all these um, racks are painted up, these cages that hold the aircraft and transport the aircraft. We need to put them onto the aircraft. Now we do that in two stages. So these smaller cages attach directly to the aircraft and then we can attach the aircraft to the, cage, the transport trolleys um, if we wish to. So um, I'm going to start by adding these onto the um, aircraft bottoms. Um, there's two different types obviously because we've got two different aircraft. Um, so the important thing is that we uh, get that bit right. So we've got to start by doing the three um, biplanes first. Um, and we're just going to test fit one first. So I'm clear in my head where it goes. And it goes on the single float. Um, and straddles the little step in it. Uh, test fitting it is also a good way of getting your head around the best way of attaching it and it's not going to be with tweezers through the middle like that. Okay, and then tweezers aren't quite wide enough to pick it up so we'll go with these just because they're wider. There we go. Okay, so it's going to be a little tricky, I guess. Uh, let's try and glue one on and see how that goes. So, I'm just going to put a bit of glue on my applicator here and then run the edges of this through the glue that's on the end of the tip there. Uh, that should give me enough glue to hold that in place. And then we can just carefully place it into position. And the key crucial thing is going to be making sure that it is level so that your plane um, isn't sat crooked on the uh, transport cage. Okay. That's the first one on. Um, I'll crack on and get all these done uh, and come back to you when we're ready to add them onto their transport trolleys. So with all the aircraft on, um, my next task is to just go around and do any touch-up. Um, so it's a process of just systematically going through um, a, um, a couple of centimetres of length at a time and just checking everything from every angle. Um, there is one or two things we've added on that we know we've not painted in, the anchors, some of these swing-out davits. There's one or two other things there we've painted and a little bit of glue or or um, photo etch or whatever is shining through so we just need to touch up. So we're just going to do that process now. Um, it doesn't take too long and actually it's quite satisfying because you, you're going all the way through the build and just uh, revisiting everything you've done. So it's, I quite enjoy this uh, touch up process um, at the end. So just painting in that that David there. So 
Okay, so I will go through that and then we will come back to you. So I've done the touch up. Um, the next task is um, the replacement ladders. So I've got four ladders to put in place. Um, one on the lower deck there and then one on this upper um, gantry um, on each side. So I'm just going to do that um, now. Uh, I've painted them up but what we will do no doubt once we put them in is just go back and, and touch them up. lower one is um, a bit more tricky uh, in hindsight probably should have got round to fitting this before we uh, put the searchlight platform in place however it is doable so that's two. And that's going to start happening as we uh, get towards the end. Now I have to use magnifying glasses because my eyes is deteriorated a bit. When you've got your magnifying glasses on, you lose your peripheral vision. Um, and so I find myself knocking bits off with a bit more regularity. I'm guessing I'm not the only one that experiences that. Okay. So, see the ladders in place, they do make a difference and they do need a little bit of touch up. Right then, that is on, and that means the end of ugly plastic ones. So that is the build complete as far as Tamir is concerned. Um, however, I would like to add at least some token rigging. So we're going to be using um, this MIG rigging thread um, which is um, 0 0.02 what they call medium fine um, and I don't think the camera is going to pick it up particularly well um, so I, I will show you the process and then we will take some photographs um, but it's a basically um, uh, like easy line it's a, um, a stretchable um, rubber line. Okay, so um, because we're doing um, an out of the box build, um, uh, we're not going to do a full full on rigging. Um, that wouldn't make sense when we've not done things like add all the missing railings and, and stuff like that. Um, also, because some stuff is missing, um, like there should be a tower on top of this gun, for example, um, and some of the rigging attaches to the tower, so there's some rigging we can't do. 
So what we're going to do is just give it um, enough rigging to look like there is something on there. So we won't be doing all the signal flag lines, for example, um, but we'll be doing the basic standing rigging um, to a certain level to make it look uh, suitably busy, I guess. So we're going to start um, the process right at the stern of the ship. So what we're going to have to do is move you guys up a little bit so that you can see the whole ship. Okay, so I'm going to try and do um, a circuit of rigging um, around the entire ship in one go. If that's possible. So it means unraveling a fair amount of this. Um, as a starter. And by my end, and we're actually going to start on the stern uh, jack staff yard arm. I'm just going to put a small amount of medium CA on and attach the end. There, that's on. Okay, so that is then going to pass over the end of this yard arm here. So we're going to put another tiny amount of glue on there. And then what we're going to do is stretch the line and just touch it down on the glue. And that's on, that's the first line on. Um, so that is now going to go to the foremast yard arm. Drape it over, and a bit more. A small amount of glue, and then exactly the same, we're going to pull it taut and place it on the glue and just to check that it's it, it's uh, grabbed I just slightly slacken the uh, the rigging cable and if that bit doesn't move uh, doesn't try and contract you know it's glued in place so we've gone there, there, there. We're now going to go to the front, wrap all the way around the forward jack staff. Just move that back a bit. I'm going to wrap around the forward jack staff and then go back onto this yard arm here. Um, it saves us doing a cut, and wherever I can avoid doing a cut, I will. So a little bit of glue on the uh, forward edge of the jack staff where we're going to wrap around just to hold it in location. So I'm pulling it tight again and then just pulling it around the jack staff. We're just going to hold it there for a sec. Wind a little bit more on my arm. So 
small amount of glue on the yard arm. Hold it tight. There we go, that's on. on that one. Pull it tight. Okay, and then we go back to this um, last yard arm at the back here and that's the one we will end up having to cut and trim. So, that's our glue. Now we're gonna just pull it tight and put it on, hold it there for a sec. And then I'm going to use these dressmaking shears just to cut it. And I've deliberately left an end of what we're going to do. So that's the first bit of rigging gone. Now that um, that is pulled tight and dried, what we can do is using these nail clippers, I can get right up to the edge. Um, and, and trim against it. And what I like to do is hold the end of the uh, the rig in and give it a bit of a stretch, and then when I nip it off, it will spring back, and you won't know there's an end there. There we go. build is finished um, and there's lots of parts that are actually left over. Now some of the sprue involved in this kit are common to other kits that Tamiya use and I've got another four Imperial Japanese Navy uh, model kits to build and two of them are Tamiya um, cruisers so it's likely that some of the parts that I've got left over could well be spares for those but even if they're not they could be um, up, good upgrades for the other kits or replacements for the other kits um, if I lose something. So it's always worth hanging on to them. In this bag here, I have a full aircraft, all the parts, all the decals, the etch for putting it on its transport cage. Uh, I've got everything to build a complete aircraft. So if I've got a kit that's only got one aircraft, I potentially can add a second to it if I wish. So that's really handy. That goes in its little zip bag all in its own. Keeps it together. We have poly caps. Always handy. The sort of things, you get extras of them anyway. But if you lose one, then they're always handy to have. And of course, these are common to a lot of Tamiya kits, not just their um, Japanese ship kits. But I have... A full turret so I've got a number of spare gun barrels enough to do a destroyer um, probably even another another um, cruiser I've got one complete turret including the rangefinder so that's great I've got the tarpaulins for the ship's boats common to the Japanese Navy so they could be handy. I've even got spare ships boats in my in their entirety which may end up being better looking than ones supplied in other models. Um, I've got lots of anti-aircraft guns, I've got lots 
and lots of mushroom vents of different sizes. Um, I've got binoculars, um, I've got anchors, navigation lights, search lights, range finder, Davits, bridge windows, more binoculars, different sizes. I've got all sorts. I've even got a couple of their fasteners. So there's lots and lots of stuff and it's worth keeping all of that. It's even worth keeping these stands because it could be that I decide that I'm going to put um, this aircraft on this stand and... Um, with another kit or it's I can use these for blanking off areas these are great because it's such nice flat hard plastic I can use that for scratch building there's tons and tons so all of those will go in my spares box and that will go in my scratch building stuff um, even the black sprue is handy because if I stretch it I've got ready coloured black line which could be handy for all sorts of things from cranes and uh, rigging to aerials on tanks, all sorts of stuff. Loads of leftovers. So, plenty in my haul there. So that is our Mogami now finished. Um, and in some ways, this has been a really enjoyable build and in other ways, um, it's not. And I thought it would be nice just to round the build off by reflecting on both the model, the subject and the brand. So let's start with the subject, um, which as the Megami is at the end of a life, having had some severe damage and the back end of the ship being rebuilt with a massive flight deck, which would have been cheaper and quicker uh, and gave the Imperial Japanese Navy a um, bit more flexibility at sea. Um, Imperial Japanese Navy focused heavily on aircraft carriers and aircraft carrying ability because of the nature of what it was doing. Um, it was out there in the Pacific with um, a lot of um, uh, islands and, and that type of stuff that it needed pr to protect and it also understood the importance of aircraft, uh, aircraft um, ship spotting and all that sort of stuff. So um, the fact that we've got a flight deck, we've got 11 aircraft, I think it looks really different. I think it's a very interesting subject and kudos to Tamiya for, for bringing that to us. Um, I think the model um, as a subject is beautiful. Now... Uh, Tamiya's approach to it um, is a game of two halves, so let's just go through that, shall we? Highlights of this build. Um, you have to say the engineering of the kit is absolutely superb. Nobody engineers a kit like Tamiya, and that's a fact. Um, the quality of the parts, absolutely top class. So things like the masts here have been made out of a stronger um, type of plastic so that they're much less likely to break when they're being cleaned up or when they're being handled. So that's really, really good. Um, the rest of the parts, crisply moulded um, and where they put detail, they do it well. And there's one of the first drawbacks. The detail on this model is hit and miss, and that is typical of Tamiya. So we've got doors that have their latches on, and then we've got other doors, which is just a raised, totally featureless slab. So at the back here, for example, um, I've put photo etched doors on because there is just a slab rectangle. The same at the front, we put some doors on because we needed to, and we did that in several places. So, yeah, that was one of the areas that was hit and missed. The other one, if you remember, 
is underneath this deck we've got massive featureless uh, bulkheads with no windows, no doors, no trunking, no cable runs, um, just nothing. And even if they were boxed off because of part of the flight deck arrangements, there'd be some witness of the past there. Um, so uh, I don't believe that they were featureless um, and clearly that is just Tamiya dumbing things down a little bit, which is disappointing. And that's a word you don't want to use when you're building any model kit. But really, when you're building a Tamiya one, you don't expect to. I think, overall, Tamiya have done a fantastic job of this. Um, they, their solution for putting decals on the aircraft actually works better than anticipated, and I had less problems even with their, their uh, decals. I had more issues putting this decal on the um, uh, first gun turret than I did on the aircraft. Um, I think their instruction layout, although a bit busy, uh, um, it worked, it made sense, the build sequence was, was largely good. Um, I think some areas they have dumbed down where perhaps they shouldn't and they're a bit behind the competition. So I'm, you know I'm going to mention them plastic ladders but also things like the plastic slab radars um, it, it's time that we got a little bit of photo etch for that it wouldn't it wouldn't take that much to, to have created that in their little photo etch and it's the same with the inclined ladders and you know lack of railings yeah that's a difficult one because lots of manufacturers don't put railings in um, and, and even with trumpeter who do put railings in it can be hit and miss. Some kits have them, some kits don't. But it does mean that if you want to really go to town, you're gonna to have to buy some aftermarket stuff. You can build this out of the box and you can see that was what we intended to do here. But even when you intend to build it out of the box, there's one or two things that is just a step too far and you need to change. Uh, and for me, uh, that was primarily the ladders and the radar. I put railings on the front and the back to add some additional interest. I didn't like the slab sides, so I wanted the railings there as a focus. And I think the, the uh, bow area and the bow deck just looks empty without it. Obviously, there's a lot more railings that we could have put on, should have put on. Um, but without knowing what those railings would have looked like, um, without doing the research, um, that becomes a big job. So um, what we've done is we've done um, a fairly straightforward build um, and it's gone together really well. So much so that at times it got a little bit boring just because of how easy it was to get the parts together. Um, it was simply clean it up and, and then put it in place and you didn't even have a lot of, of clean up. Um, I question whether we need all the mechanical fasteners to hold um, it together. In some places, I'd even argue it's slightly over-engineered. Um, but the overall look, the finish, and the rate at which you can build it is really impressive. Is it a nice model? Absolutely. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. Um, but if you want to go to town on it, you're going to have to do a lot of research and get a lot of aftermarket. There isn't really a reasonably priced aftermarket set for this. Um, now I have other um, Imperial Japanese Navy kits and other Tamiya ship kits um, and we will go to town on uh, uh, a couple of them to show you what can be done um, which will include weathering and, and all sorts of stuff. So uh, I wanted to show you what it looks like if you straight build it and this is what you get. Um, I'm really grateful to all of you who voted for this to be built because it has been fun uh, and it's what I needed uh, to break up uh, one or two other things that I've been doing um, that have been a little bit heavy going. Um, I'm going to put this now in, in on my display with my um, other ships um, where it will absolutely look the part um, and we'll crack on with our other builds and at some point we're going to build 
that little Fujimi Imperial Japanese destroyer and we will go to town on that and we will do our research on that and we will wear that and show you what can be done if you really want to spend the time on it. I hope you've enjoyed this build series. Um, each episode has been a joy to put together. Um, I've had a lot of fun. Um, I've really enjoyed the, the comments. You guys have clearly enjoyed it too. So thank you very much for watching. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your modeling, and we will see you very soon.